Hey, welcome back guys. Today we're making homestyle meatloaf and potatoes. All right, today I have three pounds of ground beef that we're gonna be using. Also have some finely diced onion and green pepper. I have a small, a whole small onion here and about a half of a green pepper finely diced. Now, when I make my meatloaf, I generally like to saute my vegetables first and let them cool down before I put them in the meatloaf. If I do not saute them, then I'll try to make sure that I dice them finely the way they can uh, cook the way that I want them to cook. But that's definitely optional. If you'd like to saute yours, saute them. If not, just uh, dice them finely. Also using a pack of Lipton onion soup mix uh, for the seasoning. We're gonna be using some Italian breadcrumbs. I have about a cup of breadcrumbs left. That's gonna be enough for our binder here. And we're gonna be using three large eggs. I just love meatloaf. Meatloaf has always been one of my favorite dishes ever since I was a kid. Um, you can always make, you know, there's nothing like a good meatloaf sandwich the day after. I like it meatloaf, you know, cold or warmed up when I make a sandwich, but either way, I'm just a huge meatloaf fan. And back in the day, it, they, it, you can make a huge meatloaf and it didn't cost a ton because hamburger didn't cost a lot back then. Quite naturally, like everything else, it's gone up since, but it's still cheap enough to where you can, you know, feed your family for a decent amount. So with seasonings, I'm just going to keep it really simple. It's a black pepper, granulated onion, and we're going to be using some uh, Kinder's garlic salt as well. You're going to go pretty liberal with your salt and your, uh, your onion and your pepper. And it's, you know, not as liberal with your garlic salt because you don't want your meatloaf to come out uh, super salty or anything like that. When it comes to meatloaf, I prefer airing on the side of caution because once you get too much salt in there, there's really nothing you can do about it. And then we're going to be going in with some ketchup as well. I have about a half a cup or so of ketchup in there. And now all we're going to do is just mix this and combine this really, really well. The best tool you have in your kitchen is your hands. So make sure your hands are clean and get it in there. If you have some gloves, throw those gloves on and just go ahead and get busy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mix this meatloaf up and when I got it completely combined, I'll be back with you guys in a second. All right, so I've got my meatloaf um, completely combined. What I have here, if I have, a, I have a cookie sheet with a foil lining on it to keep the cleanup really easy and nice. And we're just gonna lay that loaf down in the middle of the pan. I did spray my pan with a little bit of cooking spray to make sure that the meatloaf doesn't get stuck to the bottom there. And all you're gonna to wanna to do is just begin to form it into a nice loaf. I like to try to keep my um, football as uniform as possible and even as possible. So I don't have it necessarily kind of thin on the edges and then kind of fat in the center. I try to keep it as even all the way around as I possibly can. To me, it cooks a lot better doing it, doing it that way. So that's, I just prefer doing it like that. So if you can, just try to make sure that your meatloaf or that your loaf is as even as possible all the way around. Another pro tip that I've uh, shown before, if you want to make sure that you try to knock out some of those cracks, a lot of times when you make your meatloaf, it'll separate and it might crack. If you use a little bit of water, you can kind of go around your meatloaf and almost like clay kind of smooth out some of those edges and some of those areas where it looks like it may crack. So just put a little bit of warm water on there and, and begin to smooth it out like we're doing here to make sure that it's nice and even and smooth. This is going into a 375 degree oven and we're gonna let it go for 45 minutes before we come back and then add our, apply our ketchup. All right, here are my potatoes. I've got them cut, uh, peeled, and just soaking in some nice cool water. We try to keep them as uniform as possible because we're not making a mashed potato, just more of a boiled potato. All right, and here's our meatloaf. We've had it in now for 45 minutes. It's looking good, it smells amazing. And I'm just gonna add some meatloaf on top. Now, if you wanted to make your, your, your glaze sweet, then you could take your ketchup and add a little brown sugar to it and then go ahead and lay it on top of your meatloaf. I don't like the glaze super sweet like that. I believe the ketchup is sweet enough, especially when it cooks. The sugars begin to come out of the meatloaf even, or the uh, ketchup even more. So I prefer just to go straight from the ketchup bottle to the meatloaf and have a really, really thin layer on it. Um, like I said, if you like your sweet and you like a lot of ketchup on top, then hey, do what you want to do. But this is just kind of the way I like to do it. Sometimes I prefer it just with the meatloaf or just gravy. So it's kind of totally optional up to you. But this is how we're going to do it. We're going to glaze it up real nice. Then we're gonna go right back into that oven and let it go for about another 30 minutes or so. 
All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and get started on our potatoes. What I have here, I have uh, my pot of boiling water and it's just about coming up to a rolling boil. And what I've done is I've seasoned my water with salt and I've seasoned my water to where it's almost salty. That way you don't have to overly salt your potatoes when you're done. It helps season the potatoes and it makes them a lot better when you're done. All right, guys, here's our meatloaf, our finished look on the meatloaf. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead on and let it cool. I'm going to remove it from this foil and get it out that grease and just let it sit until we're done with our potatoes. And here's a quick close up. You can see it did crack a little bit in a few little areas, but it's perfectly fine. It's gonna taste delicious and I can't wait to dig into it. All right, so now we're just gonna go ahead and check on our potatoes. We've never been boiling now for about 20, 25 minutes. And all you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your potatoes are fork tender. Be sure to kind of check several of them that way you don't get caught with any surprises. And once they're, they're fork tender, then you're gonna go ahead and drain your potatoes. Once they're drained, we're gonna put them back in the pot. If you can see, have just a little bit of that same water still left at the bottom. And when we mix them up, that water is definitely gonna dissolve. So I'm going to, after that, I'm going to put in about four to five teaspoons or tablespoons of butter. Now you can put as much butter in your potatoes as you want or as, let, or as little, but we're gonna add in about five tablespoons of butter and we're gonna put in some black pepper. Now you can taste your potatoes as well, decide whether or not you wanna add more salt. But again, we did salt our water fairly heavily, so it's going to help season those potatoes. That's the reason I do it. That way you don't have to add a lot of salt on the back end. So once you add in your pepper, we're also gonna add in just a little bit of complete seasoning just to tie everything together. And you're gonna take your spoon and you're just gonna to begin to mix the potatoes up. You're not smashing them, but you're just mixing them up really well. You'll have some that kind of smash, some of them that stay firm. So it kind of puts you in the mind of a baked potato uh, just without the, the skin. So this is just another way I like to make our potatoes. They're really, really good. The kids like them and uh, it go real good with that meatloaf. So after you're done with this and you mix them up, just put the lid on it, let it sit for a few minutes, then you'll be ready to plate up and eat. All right guys, and here's our finished plate. Nice fat hunk of meatloaf here. See those peppers and onions in there. We got our potatoes. I got a little bit of steamed broccoli on the side. This is gonna be a good one. I hope you guys enjoyed the recipes. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Share, share, share if you will. Till the next time guys, God bless. We'll see you around.